Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for June 18th. Uh, we gather this evening to interview a candidate for the job of Comptroller here in Arlington. So um, I would just like to start out by thanking our screening committee that I honestly feel did an exceptional job, uh, despite my leadership uh, on that. Um, Diane Johnson is unable to be with us here tonight, but she was part of the screening committee, along with Karen Malloy, along with Steve Gilligan, along with Adam Chapdelaine and myself. Andrew Flanagan, our superb deputy town manager, is here. He ran an assessment center for us for each of these candidates. So the five-member screening committee met, um, and I'd like to start by saying it was originally my goal to bring two candidates before this board, but I'll explain why we're here with uh, one candidate this evening. So we had 19 applicants for this position. Uh, of those 19 applicants, the screening committee, we met and we rated and we uh, determined which of those candidates we felt should get an initial interview and to go through the assessment center. Nine candidates were invited to the initial uh, interview and to do the assessment center, of which seven, uh, um, I, seven was that, if I'm remembering correctly. So the seven went through that, they did the assessment center, and from that we uh, determined three finalists, and I believe last Friday, last Thursday, uh, last Friday we, the screening committee, met with the three candidates. And in my opinion, and this is unanimous by the screening committee, uh, I honestly feel one has risen so clearly to the top that I felt I wanted to bring this candidate before the board for each of you to interview and to make your final decision. Before we do that, I'd like to ask any of the members of the screening committee uh, who are with us tonight uh, if they'd like to add anything. First, Adam, anything you'd like to add to uh, you know, I, I, I really, I echo your sentiments. Uh, I, I know myself, I was very impressed with the, the, the interviews, the presentation, and the, the background and everything that uh, Mr. Viscay brought to the table. And uh, I, I think, I don't know if the board would like to, but maybe hear from uh, Andrew Flanagan about the assessment center, if you think that's a, appropriate. Yep, I, I was going there after right. the screening committee members. But So, Caron, uh, <laughs> our, our Director of Human Resources, anything you'd like to add? or? Thank you. Our excellent treasurer, Mr. Gilligan, sir. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to add that um, unintentionally I conducted a straw poll uh, <laughs> because I've been in meetings over the last couple of weeks with uh, other finance officers from not only for all the women, but certainly in this area, the treasurers and comptroller, and have heard um, nothing but great praise and good things about Mr. Biscay. Thank you very much. So uh, one of the things I learned through this process is that one of the things the town does is develops an assessment center where uh, each of the candidates are, and Andrew, take it from there and explain what the assessment center was and your impressions. So Dan, you want to ask something first? I just think, Mr. Chairman, if we could have the microphone for the people. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Correct. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, as the chairman said, we typically uh, run candidates uh, applying for all different positions within the organization through um, an assessment center style exercise. Uh, generally they have different components. We test things like basic knowledge uh, that uh, is needed in the position, uh, written ability to communicate um, uh, through some kind of writing sample, and then uh, an assessment to see how they actually act or operate um, in something like Microsoft Excel. Uh, and there are, they almost every uh, time uh, really uh, provide us with a lot of information about a candidate that doesn't necessarily come out uh, in a typical traditional interview. Um, so the assessment center that we put together for uh, the controller candidates had two primary components. One was a basic financial knowledge assessment about municipal finance here in Massachusetts. We provided them uh, with information with regard to the town of Arlington's FY 2015 tax levy um, with that information and a little bit of information about the FY16 levy um, we asked them to do a full calculation of what the FY16 levy uh, 
would look like. Uh, we gave it to him as a piece of paper, asked him to do this in Microsoft Excel um, using, you know, all the tools contained in Microsoft Excel and make it of such quality that it could be used in our um, budget materials. Uh, the second piece was more um, of an accounting exercise where we gave them, again, limited amount of information but enough information uh, to ask them to produce a report that would be regularly requested from either myself or the manager from the comptroller. Uh, and then we asked them from the information generated through that report uh, to put together a written memo um, explaining what the town's options were. It was a payroll exercise meant to basically show us where we are at the end of the year. So in short, uh, all seven candidates participated um, in the, uh, the exercise, um, and uh, Mr. Visquet uh, performed far and away the best on both components of the exercise uh, when compared to the rest of the candidates. So. And, and Andrew, I had asked you after you, he would, come, he would came in and spoke to us about each candidate and how they had done in the assessment center. And I said, if you were a professor, what grade would you give the candidate? And the only one you gave an A to was? Mr. Was, <laughs> was, 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 uh, that's was, a lead-in. That's a softball uh, yeah. question. Was Mr. Viscount. Adam, coach him more tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right, but right, uh, am I, I think, I, did you give a B? I forget, but, but the only A, am I correct? Well, was, uh, was Mr. Viscay, right? Okay. Can I yes, question, go ahead. Andrew, um, I understand that uh, you have to go with what the protocol is designed for, which is Microsoft Excel, I think I heard you say, or Excel. That's what we use for this exercise. I'm, I'm just wondering where this is really a sort of heavy munis job. Um, how, what's the similarity between Excel and munis? Or are you testing something totally different? Like, can, can you assess the big thing for all for a lot of us is muni knowledge of Munis, and I did see it in Rich's um, resume curriculum vitae. But I'm just wondering, is there any sort of compilation or comparison between Excel and um, Munis? There is um, the most up to date uh, Munis. You can export to Excel. A lot of people do, do that. The current controller, the former controller, did that on a regular basis, and then you can import uh, back into Munis. But a lot of reports we use. Uh, to make decisions. You know, our accounting system is munis, but Excel has a lot more functionality in terms of actually manipulating data um, and presenting in a way that uh, is easily uh, interpreted by the people who are making um, the financial decisions. With regard to munis, we did think a lot about uh, including an assessment component with that. Mm -hmm. uh, our concern was there are uh, uh, many different uh, versions of um, units out there and different communities are operating on different uh, versions so it would be very tough depending where the candidates were um, in terms of where they were currently working and whether or not they had munis uh, you know their interface could look mm -hmm. a lot different uh, to one candidate than uh, ours does based on where we were in terms of updates so it wouldn't be a completely uh, uh, level playing field that being said while I wasn't on the panel I do think um, an assessment of uh, munis knowledge is one of the questions that was asked absolutely can anyone yes. comment? Oh. Uh, sorry, no, I, I'm just, cur keep just curious on that, either, either with Andrew or through the chairman or town manager, um, was there any part of the Excel um, protocol that was able to extrapolate sort of basic working knowledge of Munis or what was the questions that were asked um, to kind of satisfy that? I, so again, um, it would be very hard through there, any candidate's work in Excel to uh, equate that to any kind of knowledge of Munis. So in terms of what was asked in the interview. I'd yeah, so we, in, the, in the first round, it was a very direct question about, tell us about your experience using any financial software. What, what do you use? And if you use Munis, we probed a little bit deeper about their experience with Munis and, and you know, whether they currently were working on it, what experience they had with it. In the second round, we dug a little deeper about whether or not they'd implemented any new modules in Munis uh, and, and probed deeper into their familiarity with using the Munis system. Okay. And, and just for Rich's edification, I just asked that because that's sort of the backbone of the financial software that we develop, agree to uh, move forward on, and there's been sort of a pro and con between the town and school. I just want to make sure so we can carry on with that um, particular edict with um, using Munis and integrating everything else that, you know, Rich is aware of that and you all assessed that, that that was appropriate so for his if experience. I may, Mr. Chairman. I my, uh, my number one priority from the start was making sure that the board could have the chance to look at somebody to a point that was expert in Munis. Uh, I, I, it is, I'm with you that it is absolutely crucial uh, that the incumbent comptroller has to be 
a munisex. We don't have that capacity. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Carroll. Mr. Yeah, thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chair. I, I just, in fairness to the candidate, I, I did note on the um, curriculum vitae that that on, in Salem there was some some work with Munis on the time and attendance mm -hmm. automation. If I'm not mistaken, okay. in reading that. That's, and, and we're about to call them up. You can ask any questions you'd like, obviously, including uh, that question. Mm -hmm. Any more for Andrew? No. Okay, Andrew, thank you. Thank you very much. On a test, I would have failed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> thank God. I'm not a candidate for comptroller. So uh, here's what I'd like to recommend we do next. I'd like to call up Richard to the microphone, ask him if he'd like to make an opening statement, and then one at a time ask each of my colleagues uh, what questions you have for Richard. Um, comments, statements, anything uh, that you would like. Uh, then we would ask Richard to step out while we actually uh, see if there's a motion to appoint him and, and take a vote on that, and then we would bring him back in. Is that process okay with everybody? Okay, Richard. Hello. So, welcome. Good evening, Richard Visque. Um, appreciate you having me here. I'm very uh, honored to be the the lone candidate brought forward. I um, really look forward to joining the team and, and helping any way I could with uh, keeping the financial structure of the city intact, AAA rated, very uh, very impressive there. And uh, happy to sit here and answer any questions about my experience, my day-to-day -day operations, and what I do currently, or any other questions you have. Thank you very much. So uh, do you remember we started the interview, Richard, asking each candidate, well, you you were alone in the room, obviously, but uh, why do you want to come to Arlington? Well, I came to Arlington because um, I, I know it to be a great community, AAA rated community. It's really run uh, professionally, uh, uh, the town manager, in a, a pretty stable environment. Um, been doing this for the last 16 years. Started at the Commonwealth inside at the DOR, working with 25 cities and towns throughout the North Shore. Got to appreciate, really, when the community is run well versus when the community is not run so well. And, and um, from that, I was able to um, come over onto the town side and went to Mass. I started as the first finance director of the town. Um, learned the town form of government pretty well. Had the opportunity to um, go over to the city of Salem and work with a city council and a mayor. And again, uh, seven years later, I had another opportunity to go to Everett in the midst of the uh, game and license uh, fight. Thought that was going to be a pretty exciting um, Opportunity. It, it certainly was an exciting opportunity. We, we were able to obtain the license and thought that was a pretty great feat. And um, now I'm just looking for the new challenge. Uh, I know that Ruth Lewis, that was working there for so many years, retired and, and did a little research on the community. It just seemed like a perfect fit for me. And, uh, and uh, like I said uh, in the interview, it's the, probably the first job I applied for in 10 years. Most of them I was actually recruited to come to. So it uh, just goes to show you how. Uh, how much I thought it would be a great opportunity. Thank you. I, and didn't you say something about you heard what tremendous leadership there was, especially <laughs> yeah, on the Board of Selectmen? Yeah, the Board of Selectmen chair, especially. <laughs> you better be careful. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> No further questions. You said, you said city versus town. You got two right there. All right. So, well, last. when it, I'll go last. You'll go last. I was going to go by seniority. So. Oh, if you want, I. Well, I feel are like you ready? Talking all the time. Yes. No, that's what questions do you have for Richard? Um, and I'm kind of joking about that, but I'll, I'll tell you, if you get up before town meeting and you refer to us as a city, a lot of people <laughs> are going to pick up on that, as well as a comptroller uh, position, uh, attention to detail. I, I, I'm going to try to limit my questions um, just because I have the opportunity to go for, first. Um, so I guess I'll just ask two. Um, my first question would be. Um, in terms of, I know you were at the town in Wenham, Wenham and now the cities of Salem and Everett. Uh, here in Arlington, as you're probably aware, some people um, look at the comptroller sort of as a check and balance um, and reports to the Board of Selectmen. What I would like to ask you is a twofold question. First of all, what sort of interface do you see with the Selectmen in terms of um, do you have in your mind or is there something you come up with in terms of uh, reporting back to the full board um, in, in terms of an annual, semi-annual, once a year, twice a year um, sort of basis. That would be my first question. I'm just kind of looking to, um, you know, what you're going to do to work uh, cooperative, 
cooperatively with the board in terms of coming back to us? What's most comfortable for you? I mean, uh, and I'm not I'm not committing you to what this. What typically but. do right now in in my current um, situation, I have a committee of administration and finance, and I give them monthly reports on expenditures year to date on our enterprise fund and on our general fund. I attend every meeting and I answer any questions and. And after that, I just, as needed, if someone asks some information for me, I give them whatever they ask for. But short of knowing exactly what the routine is, my, my standard thing would be to, to, to report the budget, the act, actual expenditure reports. And if you do revenue reporting, we can give you budget to actual revenue reports. And um, again, just to be there and to answer any questions, I think would be the most effective way, <clears throat> not being a mind reader or not knowing what you'd like to see. And certainly once I get a little bit better feel of how business is running, I will try to, you know, work to, work to the board and, and what their needs are, whether it's capital items, whether it's uh, projection, forecast, et cetera. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. That's, that's fine. I just want to, I guess, <clears throat> I'm sure this came across in the interviews, even though it was sort of a widely... Um, encapsulating uh, in terms of people that were on the interview committee the comptroller um, as you know uh, is hired and overseen by the board of selectmen and a lot of people in town see you, you as and Ruth Lewis previously is sort of the checks and balance um, and so one of your main in my opinion one of your main duties would be the relationship that you do establish with the board and a lot of that is communication but as you say you know um, you'll do some more homework and kind of get up to speed on that. I'll ask my second question, and I'll just tell you one thing. Anything you ever send me, whether it's written word or budgets or capital planning or projections or communications with the DOR, like my colleagues, definitely read everything. Um, we'll be the first one to call upon you or others in your staff to, to explain that to me because I am a little challenged by numbers, but I've learned if I do a little bit of query that you know I can usually get there. So. So just trying to define who I am. The second one would be um, you, you highlighted um, in terms of your highlights, um, internal controls um, that you had put in place in the various jobs that um, you had held. And I was just wondering um, what thought you might have given to where there is a town side and a school side. And there has been talk about a consolidated finance um, committee group bringing the two together. But right now you do have a town side in a, in a school side, um, you, are, you will be the comptroller upon a successful vote. Um, and I know that Powers and Sullivan is our external auditor um, that does our audits for us. I'm just wondering when you get the management letter back from a Powers and Sullivan or whatever, and there are recommendations and suggestions, I, I was wondering if you could speak to some of the um, internal controls that you really felt were highlights or successful might have been sort of something that was never done before. Um, just where you put that down as one of your highlights, if you could kind of just expand on that a little. Yeah, the highlights of my internal controls is that, unfortunately, a lot of the places where I worked didn't have any, so it was my job to actually implement them. Um, I can give you examples of um, uh, water and sewer enterprise fund people who are putting the bills in, entering the bills, also have the ability to abate the bills and adjust the bills. That's a check and balance there that has to be segregated, there has to be proper internal controls on the software, who has access to doing what functions. I mean, that's the, the biggest risk is making sure that, you know, the, you know just like the treasurer and the, and the uh, comptroller, they have to have separate duties so there's no um, collusion or ability to manipulate funds. Um, internal controls on receivable just to make sure that everyone's communicating the assessors to the collectors, collectors to the auditors, make sure that all the overlays book, I mean, all the overlays book, make sure all of the monthly abatements are booked, any adjustments, any kind of exemption you may have for veterans, surviving spouses, just to make sure that everyone's doing what they're supposed to do when you get together every month and reconcile um, and just have good internal controls so when you don't look at the books at the year end, they reconcile and you don't have to try to do 12 months worth of work to figure out why you're off on your reconciliation. Um, how much, how much more do you want? I'll stop because I'll wait. I, I think my colleagues will probably ask everything else I want to ask. I'll stop there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dunn. <clears throat> uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I guess my first question is, uh, so thinking about what, I don't know, your first couple months or something like that in this job, 
what do you think you'd get done? What would be your goals? Like, what would you look back and say, this is what I want to get to, you know, what, what do I want to do in the beginning? Well, first I want to get a familiarity with what the, what the staff's functions are and what they do, and um, hopefully get a chance to have Ruth come in and show me what her monthly routine is. Again, what kind of reports are required of the select and what kind of reports are required of the town manager, um, who's doing what, and then uh, just take an assessment, not really to go, in, go into change the world here, but just to see how things operate, how the treasurer and the auditor, I mean the comptroller reconcile their funds, how the assessor's role plays in there. Just get a good feel of what the financial team is. Of course, talk to the town manager and the assistant town manager about, you know, day to day operations, what's expected, and then then start to look toward what, what the goals are and objectives and and just create kind of a a bit of a timeline on on, on how the fiscal operation works because once you get it after the first year, it tends to be pretty cyclical. So just want to get involved with who's doing what and then try to bring my, some of my expertise and my, my um, uh, abilities to, and try to just, I mean, it's a well-run community. So, you know, in some respects, I want to make sure it doesn't go down. You know, it's tough to go up with AAA, but certainly want to improve and, and, and just try to find ways to do things better and more efficient and hopefully um, work well to communicate that information with the with the residents and the, and the selectmen and, and all the stakeholders. Okay. Uh, one more, Mr. Chairman, and then I'll move on. Uh, so uh, one of the things I find unusual about this job is uh, being selectman, by the way, is doing public interviews. It's something like, so interviewing Adam, for instance, for his job and doing it publicly, it can be really awkward sometimes, but it's part of the, as you know, it's part of the thing. So here we are with a question that is probably easier to ask and answer when you don't have television cameras. Uh, when you look at who you're going to be working with in this job, some of them are people that you're going to be working for, and some of them are people who work for you, but then there's a lot of people that you're going to be working with who you don't have that relationship with. Like they answer to another authority. So for example, the treasurer is directly elected, the assessors are directly elected, the director of assessment, so, you know, so, and uh, you're going to periodically need to do things or ask, and the CFO reports to, of course, the school committee, and they're directly elected. Can you give me an example of um, a time when you were working in a relationship with like that and you weren't getting what you needed? Like, you know, there was friction or conflict or something like that and how you managed that? What I'm saying is it's not always going to be easy. How are you going to, can you give me an example of a time where you ran into that conflict and how you managed it? Sure. I mean, just in the current situation I'm in right now, we have an assessor that falls under the direction of the CFO, but they report to a, a board of assessors. And again, we're, we're having trouble reconciling overlay and um, have to go in there and just explain what the proper process is and just try to drill down and find out what exactly they're doing. It, regardless of who they answer to or, or work for, there's, there's a flow of work that has to come through. So just to get familiar on what happens at a board meeting, um, when you give an abatement, how is it filed? How do you put it in the system, how do you send it over the collector and then ultimately to air. So basically just get everyone around the table, talk about what the steps are being taken and, and you end up finding out a little more information on what's, you know, whether it's a, a posting a, an abatement on the day you type it versus the date it was actually granted. Type stuff like that is um, in a computer system will we'll throw off the, the balances. So just to get, to get an idea and say, oh, you know, when you, when you put in an abatement on the 12th of June, make sure you date it May 18th because that was the meeting date so that we, we understand what each other are doing because the system talks to uh, each other in, in a different way. So basically just communicating and working together with people. I mean, who they report to is, is less important than what exactly is the problem and how can, we, how can we address those problems. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kiro. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. Um, sure. I think some of my thinking was on the same lines with Ms. Mahan. Um, you know, you've obviously you've worked in a town form of government. You've worked in the in cities as well. And um, I have kind of a two-part question. I was wondering what you um, <clears throat> what you see as the biggest difference between working in the two the the two different um, <clears throat> governmental systems. Obviously, you've been the last nine years in in cities. And maybe I'll I'll put that out there just on its on its own and and, um, and follow up. Politics. <laughs> I mean, it's an elected mayor position, and sometimes the mayor is um, busy trying to get elected as opposed to running good government, and that's where um, I have to step up and just make sure that 
everything's done in accordance to the Mass General laws and make sure we're doing our requirements with the DOR and such. And you tend to get a better um, understanding of that when you're working with a town manager who's, who's not worried about getting reelected every two years or four years. It creates a bit of a more stable environment, which is, which is what I find I like better than the city political every two year elections type of um, system. Okay, and kind of following up on some of what uh, Ms. Mahan um, had been asking about, I know I see in your resume that you've put a lot of emphasis on um, kind of uh, reporting and, and you've won some awards for, for um, your reporting. I'm wondering how you deal in a town environment like this. Well, you know, to Mr. Dunn's point, we do have very dispersed um, uh, leadership, and although you ultimately report to the, the Board of Selectmen, there are a lot of different reporting needs from the different uh, branches. For example, I know that the, the school committee likes to get monthly budget to actuals reports. You know, uh, I know that um, the finance committee often pulls re reports and makes requests on an ad hoc basis. We interface with the, the comptroller's office also, you know, often through the audit or through the long range planning um, process. And I was wondering how you balance all those. If, if you see your role as, as learning the the processes and practices that are already in place, or if you have some best practices that you look to bring in to the job from your pre previous experience? Well, I mean, I would, I would think it's a hybrid. I, I certainly think I've put some best practices in place, but certainly want to come in and, and see what's going on now. And, and I come to a community and, and I find that they're doing something that I've never seen that I think is really neat as well. So it's um, a lot of the a lot of the systems, they're the same but different. I mean, I created five-year financial forecast, long-range plan and capital plans, but I've also looked at how this town does it, and I think there's certain aspects that I say, oh, that's a really good way of looking at it. Some communities are more concerned with Prop 2.5 and, and being up against that levy limit, and in the city, sometimes we don't have that. It's, it's not so much about taxes at a levy because we have excess capacity, so some of the some of the analysis and dynamics are different, but um, my first goal is to find out what's going on, how business is run, how reports are done, how the communication is to the various boards and committees, and then um, and then get to know the people and, and get to feedback of what they'd like to see or maybe questions they've had in the past that never got answered and, and hopefully provide each and every one of them what they need to help them do their job the best they could. Okay, thanks. And my last question is uh, your last uh, three positions you've been either the chief financial officer or the finance director. Comptroller is obviously a very discreet role um, in, in comparison to that, and I'm wondering how you um, you approach that uh, coming in and kind of making almost a, a transition. Well, all three of the positions I've had as finance director or CFO have always been with the town account and our city auditors. That's why I've, I've always been on the general ledger side of the equation. The, the, the other fun stuff that come with it is just more or less the communication and, and, and the umbrella mm -hmm. effect so that um, in a city, a lot of times you want to ask one person what's going on with all these departments so it, it creates efficiencies in senior staff meetings and such. But at the end of the day, I, I've always been an accountant. I've been a, a comptroller type position. So that's my strength and, and, and that's what I feel I can excel at even further because I, a lot of the other distraction may not uh, be with this job, so I'm looking forward to just to kind of dig down in numbers and again raise the bar and hopefully uh, improve upon any systems in place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. And um, before I get started, I do want to thank the hiring board. I, it seems like, you know, quite an in depth process played out in a, a pretty short amount of time, and uh, it, it seems like you landed on, on a pretty good candidate, particularly from um, the resume in this book that we have in front of us. And Rich, thank you for. Uh, being here with us tonight. Um, could you talk a little bit about your management experience and style and how, um, how that's going to translate over here? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I like to manage in a way that uh, fosters a lot of good relationships and teamwork. Um, I like to try to teach people not just how to do something, but why they're doing it, what the effect is on, on the different parts of the operation. Uh, certainly, I, I like to think that I can talk from you know, the town manager right down to the, the custodians and, and, the, and the laymen in the city that may have questions about whether it's taxes or, you know, how, how the capital plan is put together or anything like that. But 
basically just good communication. I, I pretty much always had an open door policy with my my um, employees, my colleagues to come in and discuss any matters. But yeah, just just trying to teach when I can teach, listen when I can listen, and then come up with conclusions and solutions to the problems. But more or less just teamwork and, and, and good communication. That's great. And, um, you know, this may be a, a little bit redundant, but you know, looking at some of your former colleagues and maybe some of the people you um, not only worked that worked for you, but also worked with you. Um, you know, what would they say about your customer service experience? Um, you know, you're not only do, does the control, you know, do the books from on a day-to-day -day basis, but you serve on a lot of committees. You're interacting with the public on a regular basis, and, and that's certainly a big role here. So, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, oh, so, so, like, what would your former colleagues say about your, you know, your experience dealing with the public? Oh, I. I I think they say I do a pretty good job. I, I, I like to think I'm a clear communicator. I'm, I'm more of a business memo type of format, so I don't. I try not to do long, wordy emails or memos. I try to be clear, concise type bullet points. But um, I know that in my role right now, I, I, I communicate twice a, a month with the council. I'm pretty much the figurehead speaker on any money or the financial matter appropriation. So uh, I do a lot of that with the council, with the committees, and. Um, it's funny, I get a lot of feedback on the streets when I'm at the supermarket or I, I'm in a store and people come up to me and say, hey, you're the, you're the CFO, aren't you? And I say, yeah. Oh, I like what you're doing. I like the way you explain stuff and everything else. So that actually, that feedback is really helpful because it, when you're up there and you're talking, you're not really thinking too much about it, but when people come back and, and appreciate how you, you conduct yourself and explain yourself, it makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing a good job at that communication. So, Thank, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Did you get everything answered? Well, you said after your colleagues. Okay. You might have, <clears throat> if yeah. I could just do maybe a brief sort of follow-up. Uh, I'm just wondering, you know, we're interviewing you and posing questions to you. Um, sort of what you've done um, to look into the town, and I want to stress that again, we're a town. If you keep slipping and say city, it may not seem like a big thing, but it is. But what, what um, uh, sort of pre-op investigation have you done with the, about the town of Arlington? Is there anything that you looked at that you highlighted in terms of something very good, something that you really want to sink your teeth into? I'd just like to know where we're making so many queries of you, what you've done on behalf of yourself in terms of what the job with the town of Arlington is attractive to you and, and sort of what you've done in that or if you have a question for any of us. Um, well, I went on the town website. I read the budget. I downloaded the um uh, official statement. I read through your official statement. Looked at your tax rate recap, your at a glance reports. I do have some uh, friends and colleagues that uh, are familiar with the town, that work in the town, and uh, just asked a bunch of general questions about how how the town is managed. I asked about Adam for people who know him. Um, like I said, I know it's a triple A rated community. I I work with First Southwest. You guys work with First Southwest. I've inquired of with them about it. Jim Powers is my auditor as well, so I know Powers and Sullivan. Um, so, I mean, I got a bunch of general knowledge about the town, and I looked at the financials, and I read the uh, last bond rate and by Standard & Poor's. So those are the types of things that I was interested in looking at. Okay, thank you. Anybody else, any other questions? Uh, one of the questions we asked each colleague uh, was how they prepared for the interview. Um, and uh, Richard presented us with this um, um, at the interview, which um, and others didn't present any uh, such thing. So, Richard, do you have any questions for us at this point? At this point, I, I don't have any questions. I just um, hope I answered all your questions, and and I, I I really hope that the vote is favorable, and I'm happy to answer any other questions if uh, if you have any, and I and I look forward to the opportunity to work with you all. Okay, thank you. So um, then at this point, Karen, could I ask you, would you uh, take Rich just out and, you know, Absolutely. just set him at the, um, in a bench out there while we have a chance to Thank you very much. Your bench right now. You can bid on some art for Nepal. Yeah. Don't go on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can come back. I didn't mean you have to leave. But no, no. No, I Richard, you, you have to, Rich. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I never heard him call us a city. He did it twice. 
I heard him say the city of Salem. Yeah. No, okay. he said it twice. He said it in his opening, and then he said it in answer to a question from the right. That's all. Okay, I didn't, but so comments. Anybody want to give impressions or thoughts or? Uh, I definitely. Uh, I rely. I'm relying mostly on the recommendation of the committee, uh, but he certainly uh, did fine in this interview. But uh, in terms of why I'm going to vote yes, is going to be because of the recommendation that you all have given. And I'm on board with. I'm on board with that. I mean, I think his credentials are you know pretty solid. It's uh, a good mix of, uh, of experience. You know, I like the DOR experience as well before he got into municipal government. Um. I guess I would um, ask either the chairman or um, the town manager, having been through interview processes before and being in a position. Mo most of the times I've been really, you know, 100%, uh, 110% there. There's only been one other time, which was a totally different circumstance. But um, I'm just wondering, maybe two questions, why we didn't have a second candidate and I understand from what was said initially, it's because this candidate rose so much to the top. And with a comptroller position, to me, what's really important is attention to detail, not just knowing that Arlington's a town versus city, but as well as um, I definitely appreciate coming in and, and walking into something that is a well-tuned machine that is working um, really great. Um, but I'm also looking for uh, sort of some semblance of them coming in versus just riding on what has existed, et cetera, where I think everyone, so many people have said to me with the current town manager, and nothing about any previous town managers, even before I was, was that really being in tune with the time in terms of transparency and taking advantage of technology and, and things like that. Um, so I guess my question would be, and I'm, tr I'm not trying to be critical, I'm just, you guys know how I am, um, how did this candidate rise to the top versus having a second to compare to? You know, what is it that really, if you could just not sell me on that, but do you understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, I want to sell you, so let me answer it first. Uh, uh, this being the third interview I've been with him, it was his worst. Uh, it wasn't great, but it was. I mean, um, uh, I felt he, he maybe was even more nervous um, this time, but I, again, will certainly let uh, Karen or Adam he so clearly knows what he's doing, which came through, certainly through the assessment center uh, of all seven of the candidates. Uh, and the other, two, for example, one of the three candidates, the finalists, didn't even attempt to try one of the two parts of the assessment uh, center. The third one, um, uh, uh, the, the third candidate, the, the well, the, the, we can't use names or anything, mm -hmm. but the second candidate um, that we all felt should this one not work out, we felt would do a great job, but, but uh, she did an awful lot of saying what she'd need to learn if she came to Arlington. Uh, you know, as in, well, I haven't done that part of it before, or I haven't done that part of it before. So, um, you know, I really am trusting much more Adam, uh, Stephen, and Diane in terms of his capabilities of doing this job. But what to me came through, not as clearly tonight, is this guy loves this kind of work. Um, and can I, can I talk about one of the, the, the mistake you made professionally question that we asked? Or can, should I not do that publicly? Or? I was going to say, can you share in the assessment stuff or no? Um, we well, the assessment. If that's one of the questions. I don't know about the. Okay, all right. Um, so, uh, you know, as I say, this was my third interview with him. There is no question in my mind I'd like to work with this guy. Uh, but again, of three interviews I did with him, I just I don't think this was his shining uh, moment necessarily. You know, I would just like to say a couple things because I did get to speak to his references and the quality of the people that he had me speak to, um, uh, you know, Mayor Driscoll from Salem, Peter Frazier from First Southwest, um, I think it's Paul Sagarino, not Peter, Sa uh, Paul Sagarino, who is the town accountant in Burlington. These are, these are very well-respected people and they just had 
excellent things to say about him. And the things that he said in the interview that really impressed me were what he wanted to do for the town, how he was going to come here and help us make a great organization even better. It wasn't a lot about what he was going to do for himself. It's that he wanted to help us make a great town even better. Um, the things that they said about him were that he's not just a numbers guy, that he's actually a brilliant budget strategist. Like he's going to help you get where you want to go. And then it's not about his ego that people really, really like him. The people, uh, not just the people up in the organization, but the people who worked below him in the organization um, really, really like this gentleman. They say he's just very down to earth and he has a great personality. So a lot of times there's the numbers people and then there's a lot of time there's the personality people and that this uh, gentleman seems to be a rare combination of those two things. And coming from those three individuals, I thought that that was saying something. So I just thought you should consider that. Thank you. Adam. So I'll, I'll start where you finished, Mr. Chairman, in that he, uh, in the first somewhat and then on the second, absolutely impressed me as really being a municipal finance nerd. And uh, not, not to use a silly term, I mean, he clearly lives, sleeps, eats, and breathes this stuff. And, and, it, and it, it came out, uh, again, in that second interview, that he was passionate about local government. So, so that was probably the number one thing that attracted me to his candidacy. Uh, and he, he, he definitely had sort of the, the breadth and scope of complexity that Arlington has in terms of its financials from his experience in Salem and his experience in Everett. Um, city government, uh, as I know from my past experience, is certainly much different, but its complexities and sometimes relationship and political complexities can mirror some of the, uh, some of the, the relationship building that we have to do here. Uh, he didn't get into it a lot, but working with a city council uh, when you report to the mayor, but still trying to um, have good relationships with those councilors, so you have to be before twice a month. Uh, is very, very challenging to do. Um, so having that skill set, and again, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Chairman, it didn't come across quite as clearly tonight as it did in some of those interviews, uh, but he, he was very impressive. The other thing I'll say, um, Ms. Mahan, in response to, to your second piece, I, I would frankly be suspicious of somebody who had never worked in the organization before, who came to an interview table and had a list of things that he or she would improve, because they don't know. They've not been in the organization. They've not worked a day in the organization. <clears throat> and I think the right answer to that question from any candidate is, I got to come in and see how things are going before I make any recommendations. So I, that, that's how I would, you know, no matter what, who the candidate was for any position, if someone comes in and says, ah, I'm going to fix things, if they've not worked here before, I, I, I might think them a fool for assuming that they know everything having not stepped through the door. I mean, I guess I would say to that, I guess I'm going to take a little, um, Assurance that um, one interview one and two he did better, um, and tonight maybe he was very nervous or maybe he thought it's a slam dunk. I don't mean it. It's a, he hit a home run. What I was looking for on that is definitely attention to detail, but thinking of the comptroller position, similar to any other um, financial um, position, whether you're dealing with health care, retirement, et cetera, when I would really knock it out of the ballpark for me, and maybe he thinks, you know, he's, he had, has done that, and maybe he has, I'm just a minority, is that, you know, I looked at, especially where he's familiar with Powers and Sullivan, it's the same um, organization uh, consultant that uh, works with the city of Everett, I looked at your last management letter and recommendations, and I see that, you know, I, I, for me, what I would have, and I've never been a comptroller, but I'm just thinking of, and I haven't just done interviews as a member of the Board of Selectmen, I've done it with, you know, Verizon, AT&T, et cetera. Um, just looking, you did a little digging, you kind of want to get a, a, a bonus point. You know, I was thinking maybe he could either say, you know, I looked at last management letter and I saw that you had this situation and the correction was et cetera, and that's similar to what happened in the town of Wen numbers. I wasn't looking for, um, so. so well, I don't want to get in the position of defending his answers. He, he yeah. did say he read the official statements, and when he says that, he means the audit okay. documents, because that, that's a term that would be used. And I think, again, I can rely on my own experience to say this, you know, he's probably coming from cities that while he was there, and if his resume is accurate, you know, he fixed a lot of these things, had 40, 50, maybe 60 comments in the management letter. So we have three. So it's not necessarily something that someone from his position would look at and say, you know, oh, there's a, a whole list of things that I got to go down to address. Because by, by comparison, uh, it, you know, it's a very clean report. 
I'm going to stop because I can see I'm in the minority. I'll stop there. Well, I think we get more than three, but that's okay. I want to see what everyone else has to say. I'm, I'm just okay. Steve, anything else? Um, no, I think um, I agree with Mr. Dunn that um, the work you guys did is uh, quite impressive, and I'm, I'm happy to go along with it. But but what really struck me is that um, the assessment when he came out, he was the only he clearly did the best. Um, and, and that's what I'm really looking for. If he's, you know, going to be working on, you know, with these numbers day in and day out, you want the person who did the best and, you know, under tight circumstances. And, um, and hearing what Karen has to say about his references, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by him. So I'm going to go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Joe? Yeah, I have one more question. I probably should have addressed it to the candidate, but I'll address it to the manager and the others on the committee. Did you have a an opportunity to talk to him about the um, the long-range planning process that we use here and and the controller's role in that because He's, the controller has a seat at the table in that no no but he explained how he developed that in Everett yeah no, well so I would actually say he did specifically oh, I'm forgetting which of the settings he asked but he did specifically ask how the long-range plan worked Okay. Uh, he had seen the fiscal stability fund, looking through some town meeting warrants and seen the appropriations, and did ask me to give a quick explanation with the confines of the interview of how the long-range plan worked here in Arlington. Okay. Okay. Anybody ready to make a motion? Mr. Dunn. Um, I'm, what, the, what is the appropriate motion? Uh, <laughs> that we would, the first is to hire him, and then the second would be to ask me to negotiate a contract with him. I move that we hire, uh, hire Richard Biscay as our comptroller. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion? Although, discussion, sure. Uh, it's actually just a question, because um, yeah. I'm prepared to vote, and I think we all are. I can, um, is there any part of that um, assessment that Andrew spoke about that we can actually receive in written form, or no? That's a protected document. I don't know why you can't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think if I see that. Yeah, because I think I'll see Rich interview one, interview two, mm -hmm. and that will, and then I assume, as Dan Dunn asked in his question, that, you know, within the first four to six, eight weeks, he'll meet with us individually. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get yeah. prepared for that. And, and he was a middle finalist that we interviewed, so I wish you could have been part of the other two interviews to see why, at least I am so clear that this guy is the best. I'm going to be strongly guided by, and I'm not being well, sarcastic or anything, that, yeah. by the chairman and, and um, the town manager and Karen and others that have spent and gone through three rounds of interview, and, you know, I totally get it. And I really take a lot of import on um, the first two interviews, you know, if you had to rate them all. Um, and, and I really do take that to heart. So I'm definitely prepared to vote um, for this candidate. If I could see that so that maybe, maybe when I have my sit-down interview with him, and I'll talk to you first, just where you were involved with the process to make sure that am I kind of interpreting this correctly. So Sure. All right, thanks. Okay. So all those in favor of the motion by Mr. Dunn, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Second motion. Move approval that uh, I'd like to request that the chairman on behalf of the Board of Selectmen enter into negotiations with Rich Visceray. Visca, I apologize, Visca, Junior. No, that's okay. Visca. Rich Visca, Junior, uh, with any other uh, department head sound manager that he deems uh, necessary to engage in those negotiations. Second, yes, second. discussion. Okay, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed. So, would you ask him back in, please? So thank you for the trust you've shown in Adam and I. Um, it's probably some you. sweat on this brow right now. That was one that was a little longer, <laughs> right, baby, than he thought. Can I offer two seconds of new business as he walks back in? Uh, if any of the board members are interested in attending the site walk scheduled for the Mugar property next Tuesday uh, at 10 a.m., the meeting point at 10 a.m. will be the Thorndike Field parking lot. And I'm I'm out of town, so I can't be there. But you That's said you Tuesday. could be there, right? Twenty third. And of course, all my colleagues want to wish my Cindy a happy twenty third birthday, and oh, yeah. I'll be oh, home yes. to help blow out the candles. That's tonight. that day. It's yeah. Tonight. Oh, tonight. Yes. Oh. <laughs> happy birthday, Cindy. Thank you. And welcome to the town of Arlington, Mr. Viscay. On a five zero vote, we voted to appoint you our next controller. However, the second vote is for you and I to enter into a contract negotiation. But. So congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, 
meeting adjourned or something else or did anything else and this, rich, rich anything, anything you want to do clean up or uh, give us a quick send us off on a high <laughs> higher send us off higher um, I just want to thank you very much for the opportunity and the confidence that you're putting in me to um, serve as the, the town's comptroller thank you Rich. And <laughs> serve the uh, board of selectmen here and uh, I look forward to um, getting started thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Uh, move to adjourn. Move. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Next meeting in the Board of T Selectmen is June 29th. Good night, Arlington. Good night. Happy birthday, Cindy. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. The next regular meeting. Yeah.